the production possibilities curve, a big favorite of economics textbooks for good reason. The production possibilities curve, or frontier as it's sometimes called, turns out to be a very simple way to illustrate four very important economic ideas. First, it's another demonstration that economics is based on the idea of scarcity, of trade-offs. So imagine a fictitious economy somewhere that makes only two goods, pizzas and robots. For the sake of clarity, economists like to make their models as simple as they can, and it doesn't get much simpler than this. Anyway, this economy's only two goods are about to be put up on a table, which represents the trade-off between them. Devote all this simplified economy's resources to making robots, and let's say it can make 10,000 of them. But that means no pizza. Making just one pile of pizzas, the table shows, means making fewer robots. And as more pizzas are made, the possible number of robots is further reduced, down to a situation of all pizzas and no robots at all. Put the different combinations on a graph and you've got the production possibilities frontier in action. So if you're willing to go without pizza entirely, that's zero down here on the x-axis, but you can make a full 10,000 robots here on the y-axis. So production possibility A up there. Possibility B involves making at least some pizza on the table 100,000 pies. But that means we only have the resources to make 9,000 robots as well. There's also possibility C, possibility D, and this frontier ends down at possibility E. 400,000 pizzas, no robots at all. The picture looks the same for any two products. After World War II, economic textbook writers started using guns and butter to illustrate that there was a trade-off between consumer goods like food and military hardware. The reason behind the trade-off is that you have to use finite resources like land, labor, and raw materials to make anything. Just think about pizza, robots, and the supply of labor. If everyone in the economy is toiling away in the robot factory, there'll be no one left for the parlor. Okay, that's the first lesson of the production possibilities curve, the economic notion of scarcity. Anything you make costs you the opportunity of doing something else with the same resources. That is, their opportunity cost. The second lesson of the production possibilities curve is a little more subtle. That the more you make of anything, the greater its opportunity cost. Go from making zero robots to 4,000 of them and we get quite a payoff. What does it cost us in terms of pizza? The chart makes it clear. 100,000 fewer pizzas. Or to put it another way, minus 100,000 pizzas divided by 4,000 robots. So the first 4,000 robots cost an average of 25 pizzas per mechanical man. 4,000 goes into 100,000 25 times. Since it's minus 100,000, that means minus 25. The minus sign simply says this is a cost, a subtraction from what we had. But look what happens when we go from 4,000 to 7,000 robots. This time, we only get 3,000 more metalheads. But to produce them, we still have to give up the opportunity of making 100,000 pepperoni specials. So again, minus 100,000 pizzas divided by a mere 3,000 robots, an opportunity cost of about 33 pizzas per robot. And when we go from making 7,000 to 9,000 robots, the extra 2,000 automatons still costs us 100,000 foregone pizzas. Therefore, the opportunity cost increases again. 100,000 pies divided by 2,000 cyborgs, 50 pies per borg. Finally, the last segment of the production possibilities curve is the costliest in terms of orders from Domino's. The last thousand androids cost the economy the same hundred thousand pizzas, but at a whopping rate of a hundred pizzas per robot. And if you spend a little more time on this graph, you can see that the same increasing opportunity costs work in reverse. The first hundred thousand pizzas cost one-tenth of a droid per pizza. The last hundred thousand cost four times as much. Thus, the law of increasing opportunity cost. But what's driving it? 
why is the production possibilities frontier concave to the origin, meaning it bows out from the place the two axes meet, like a cave or cavity? It's because things tend to cost more to produce the more you produce of them. Again, take the example of guns versus butter. Economist Cecilia Conrad explains. At first, we can move the resources that actually tend to be better suited for producing guns, the people who are, you know, perhaps really good at putting together, I'm not sure what it takes to produce guns these days, probably putting together electronic circuitry. We move those people first over to production of guns. So we can start producing guns at fairly low cost. But as we try to produce, move, move more and more away from food towards guns, then we're going to eventually have to start to bring in the people who really spent all their life out on a farm somewhere farming and don't have any idea about how the industrial process works and aren't really adjusted to working on an assembly line. And so the cost of getting the extra gun production is going to start to get higher. And that means that, and that, means that we're going to have to give up more and more butter to get the same incremental uh, addition of guns. And similarly going and the other And similarly direction. going the other direction. Another way to look at it is that you use your cheapest resources before any others. Or to use an old economics cliche, you pick the lowest hanging fruit first. Economist Jim Clark. They go for what you can get most easily, for what has the lowest opportunity cost. When they talk about grabbing low hanging fruit, oh, it's just right there. You just reach up and grab it and it takes hardly any effort. You didn't have to give up very much to get it. If you want the fruit at the top of the tree, you've got to haul out this big ladder and climb all the way up. And then maybe you can still reach it up at the top. But it's going to take you 10 or 15 minutes to get it and a lot of equipment. And if you don't have a ladder yet, you've got to build the ladder. So you want to pick the alternative that's got the lowest cost in terms of other things that you have to give up. So the low-hanging fruit's the stuff that's easy to get. In other words, all producers start with the easy pickings. Now, there are arguments about how true this is in every case. For example, aren't computer chips cheaper the more you make? But in a competitive market, economics assumes that opportunity costs rise with quantity because of the low-hanging fruit phenomenon. So where are we? Thus far, the production possibilities curve, or frontier, has illustrated both the idea of trade-offs, that is, scarcity, you can't have it all, and the idea of increasing opportunity costs. There remain two more key points about the curve. But we'll get to them in the next video.